We gather together to pause in God's presence, to make space for joy as God's people, and to hold in our prayers and in our hearts the reality of our world, grief and joy entwined. We gather in the name of the one who wove joy throughout the cosmos, the one who experienced all our human joys and sorrows, the one who whispers joy to our hearts still. Amen. We begin with a time of confession, bringing before God and before each other what we've done and what we've failed to do, seeking the forgiveness we know is near. God of grace and peace, we pray in humility asking you to forgive the pain we've caused, the harm we've done, our failure to show love and grace. We have not always loved you or our neighbors, and like your people wandering in the wilderness, we don't recognize all you've given us and find it hard to be satisfied with enough. Pour out your mercy on us. Forgive us. Lead us into new, unending life. As Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, I lift these words for you. You are completely and entirely forgiven of all your sins. Even before confession was on your lips, God was ready to breathe forgiveness on you. God has transformed the sin that once harmed you into a symbol of your belovedness. You are forgiven and freed to be a blessing to the world. Amen. Let us pray together. God of wisdom, prepare our hearts to receive your word. As your rainbow reminded Noah, all creatures and us of your covenant, let this scripture also be a reminder of your promises to us. As your commandments offered freedom to your people in the wilderness, give us a better way of living through words you speak to us today. Wherever you find us, use these words to draw us deeper into your enduring joy. Amen. A reading from John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Tonight's prayer practice, our response in prayer, our final midweek Lenten service, is vocational prayer. I wonder, can we allow joy to point us toward a clear understanding of our vocation? The word vocation comes from the Latin word vocare, to call. At its root, it is a way of talking about what God is calling us to do. Theologian Frederick Buechner describes vocation as the place where our deep gladness and the world's great hunger meet. I'll say that again. Frederick Buechner describes vocation as the place where our deep gladness and the world's great hunger meet. Joy and need help us discern where God is calling us. So if you have a piece of paper handy, I invite you to grab it, uh, and of course, a writing implement of some sort. If you don't, you can think about it in your head. Visualize or draw a circle on your paper. And in your circle, I want you to fill it with things that give you joy. You can represent those things in words or images. They can be your talents, your passions, people you love, hobbies, beloved places, milestones, celebrations. But in that circle, think about, visualize, or name out loud, or type in the comments, or physically write out all the things that bring you joy. Remember, you can always pause this video, so if you're still writing things that bring you joy, that's okay. You can pause, uh, but for those who are ready to keep moving. I want you to now draw a second circle on your paper or visualize a second circle, and I want you to fill it, fill that circle with needs in our church, our community, or around the world that are known to you and seem especially pressing. So in that second circle, separate circle, next to it, they're not connecting, we're not making a Venn diagram, just another circle. And in that circle, with words or images, I want you to fill it with needs in our church, our community, or around the world that are known to you and seem especially pressing. Again, you are welcome to lift these things in the comments, those places where you see great need in our church, our community, or our world. I wonder now, where do these two circles connect? And so I invite you to draw lines where things that give you joy connect with a need. So I want you to think about all those things that bring you joy and all those things that seem to be needs in our church, in our community, in our world, and think about where the two connect. Where can a joy meet a need? Remember, Frederick Buechner describes vocation as the place where our deep gladness, our deep joy, and the world's great hunger, the world's needs, meet. Draw those lines in your mind or on your paper. Where does our joy and the world's needs, where do they meet? Take some time in prayer to wonder about how God is connecting your joys and the world's needs.
Let's pray together. Holy God, we give you thanks for in all things you are rooting in us seeds of joy. Even where we see destruction, even where we see desperation, we know that your faithfulness is unwavering and that you are there among us. Holy God, this night we consider the ways in which you call us to use our joy to meet the needs of your people. We invite your Holy Spirit to guide us so that we might pay attention to the ways in which you call us forward. As we quickly come to the end of this Lenten season, as we wonder where this journey will take us into Jerusalem, to the cross, and to resurrection joy, we ask for your guidance. We ask you to walk with us. We ask you to wave palms and eat with us and walk to the cross with us and celebrate joy with us. Because, holy God, we trust as your people that in all things you are there. We pray this night and always in your Son's most holy and precious name. Amen. As we conclude our time of worship, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God goes with you from this place to all the places you will roam. Know God's presence with you in your wandering and your wayfinding. In every time of hardship or heartbreak, let the Spirit restore you to the enduring joy of being God's beloved child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace this night and always seek God's wellspring of joy. We will. Thanks be to God.